IRC Wealth. Take control of your finances and embrace life without worrying about money. Are you ready to ignite your business through change? Whether you experienced a year of growth or endured a year of just getting by, repeating what you did last year is not a strategy. What can you do differently to make this your best year ever? In a recent seminar called Always Be Changing, we examined driving growth through change in four key areas, brain work, framework, teamwork, and money work. In this presentation, best-selling author and CEO of IRC Wealth, David Ragland, discusses framework. David combines his experience as a CFO, tax accountant, and financial planner to help business owners take control of their financial strategies and maximize opportunities. Thank you, David. That was awesome. Hello. Good morning. Happy 2016. I thought it was day 10, not day 9, because in December, of course, I was like, oh my God, I got to have the New Year's resolution, right, that everybody has. And I was like, I had the perfect idea. I've gained this weight. I've had too much fun in 2015. I'm going to go on, and I got convinced of this by my beautiful girlfriend, you need to go on a raw diet for 30 days. You're going to eat nothing but nuts and twigs and berries and fruits and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm like, it's only day nine. And so I jump in to this, not knowing really why I'm doing it or what benefit I'm looking for. So that's really what happens to a lot of people when they come to a seminar. You know, it's, it's day nine, it's 2016. I'm coming to always be changing. Where am I going to take my business? Okay. And we make all these New Year's resolutions and we jump into 2016 wanting to change our business. But the issue with that is we're not understanding exactly where we are and where, what the business actually is. And so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on 2015, but I think it's important before you start looking at 2016 and where am I going to take my business is I really need to take a time out. I work with a company that they're all about plan, brief, execute, debrief, and we got to do a debrief and we got to debrief every mission. Obviously they're ex-military fighter pilots and all this kind of stuff. And what's funny is, is that they preach this However, and they teach it, but they don't do it. So what was interesting, just last week, we finally had 2015 sales numbers, and we finally actually did that. We started first by taking an inventory of where the business was. And then, in an honest, open environment, we kind of debriefed 2015. And so I think in your business, first and foremost, you know, David has let, uh, given us great framework to think about the theory of where we want to take the business. But before where we take the business, let's find out where the business is today. Okay? And honestly look at what we did in 2015. Now, it's not about looking at all the losses. Really, and you know, Joe and I did this in October for our business. We came back and we celebrated. Here are the things that we're doing right. We need to focus more on the things that we're doing right to propel our business to the next level. Okay, we did look at you know things that we did lose at, but we weren't going at it from a negative standpoint. We were going at it from a very positive standpoint. What are the things that we did right? Let's do more of those. And hey, what did we maybe not do so well at? But in doing that, we had this conversation. But at the end, what we did was we actually wrote down those things that we were doing right, okay? And the action plans that were going to be built off of that. So creating what we call as lessons learned, okay? A lot of times people spend all their time looking at 2015 and they say, we did this wrong, we did this right, blah, blah, blah. But they don't ever actually capture the root cause of why things are going well on paper so that they can go back to and look at those things in the future. So now it's 2016 and you want to change and we're all here about business, right? That's re really the reason you're here. But what most people fail to do that we've talked to when it comes to their business is they're running their business separate and apart from their personal finances, okay? And so when we look at it, the first thing that we're trying to have people look at is your business plan and your personal financial plan, they have to integrate. 
they have to, you have to understand that they're not two separate different things. Okay. Most people, when, when I talk to them early on, I say, well, why did you go into business? Well, my business plan is I'm going to get a business, I'm going to grow a business, I'm going to sell it, I'm going to be wealthy, and all is going to be great. Right? I mean, that's really, they've got this personal financial plan that's kind of off on the, on the side. Okay? I'm so focused on running my business every single day, but I really don't understand how my financial plan and my business plan really come together. So before you start looking at your business in detail, why don't you look at where you need to take your personal finances? Hey Joe, next year we're going on vacation together. What's your first question? Where are we going? Where are we going? So people are trying to run their business or they're trying to plan for where they're going on vacation without knowing where they're going. Okay. We're going to Miami. Well, now you kind of know, well, you need your string bikini, you need your, you know, suntan you lotion, you those bikini. things, you know, all those kind of things. Uh, you know what to pack, okay? So first and foremost, before you start trying to understand where your business is going, understand where you're going, okay, personally. You know, you look at that commercial that was on several years ago about the guy with the number, you know, he's walking a little dog, he's got the number, $1.725 million. He's walking, his name is Bob, right? He's walking down the road, and he sees his neighbor, Fred. Fred's up on the ladder, trimming the hedges, right? And so Bob looks up at Fred and says, hey, Fred, and Fred has above his head a gazillion. Bob looks up at Fred and says, hey, Fred, is that your number? Yeah, Bob, that's my number. The most important question of the entire commercial. Well, if that's your number, how do you plan for it? I don't know. I just throw money at it. And that's the way most people run their personal finances. I have, nowhere, I have no idea where I'm going. So I just throw money at it. So that old thing about what's your number is really the most important thing, first of all, from a personal standpoint, is understanding how much money that this lifestyle that you're trying to create is going to cost you. And over what timeline you're looking to build it, okay? We're going to go on vacation, we're going to Miami, and we're going in June. Okay, so I know it's going to be really, really hot. I've got six months to plan for it, okay? So now the detailed steps of how I'm going to get there become a lot easier. I know what to pack, I know what the time frame is, I know whether I'm going to be driving a car, flying in the airplane, and those types of things. So first and foremost, understand where you personally need, what kind of financial resources that you need, so that now you can design your business to help get you there. Does that make sense? Questions? Perfect. So when you look at a business from a personal standpoint, really we segregate businesses really into three different models. Okay, you're either going to have a lifestyle business, a, buy, a build to sell business, or some combination where you're going to pass it on to your family members. Okay, and how you design your business really needs to function off of what type of business that you're really looking for. Okay, and we're going to talk a little bit in depth about you know those different types of businesses that we have. So when we look at it from the straight and narrow. A lot of solopreneurs, is what we call them, are lifestyle businesses. You know, you're an attorney. It may just be you. So when you're, you know what your number is. You know your number is $4.25 million. Okay. And if you're a lifestyle business, you identify, and that's great. You say, all right, my lifestyle business is going to be focused on what? producing as much cash flow as I possibly can. Because I know at the end of the day, I'm not going to be able to sell the business. There's no gold at the end of the rainbow. Okay, I'm not looking to sell my business. I'm an accountant. I'm an attorney. I'm a consultant. You know, anything that really the business is all about you. The, you know, I'm a graphic designer. 
the business does, dies when I stop working. So in order for me to maximize my financial future, my retirement, my freedom, I need to focus on what? Well, I need to focus on limiting my expenses. I need to use contractors wherever possible. Reduce my employees. Maximize my uh, retirement plan. Use the type of retirement plans that best benefit. So the decisions that you're making from a CEO standpoint are all focused on maximizing that cash flow, minimizing my investment in my business so that I know where I'm going. You know, conversely, you may have a manufacturing company where you look at it as, I know that all, every single dollar that I have is going to set up a business that I want to eventually sell one day, okay? And so everything that you're doing within your business is designed for what? To sell it one day. So when you look at selling your business, you know what? Well, I've got to have certain things in place. First and foremost, this business has to operate without me. So from day one, you're, you're looking at your people and your infrastructure and all those things because a buyer wants to buy a business that continue without you, okay? So the most valuable business has resources, but you're investing. You're hiring people on a full-time basis. You're putting in more advanced computer systems. You know, you're trying to diversify the customer base. All of the strategic and tactical decisions that you're making says, I'm building a business that has to operate without me, okay? And so you're willing to invest, take those profits and run back. You're not as concerned about draining every piece of cash. Now the third business is kind of the hardest business is what we call the legacy business. What you're trying to do is a little bit of a combination of both. I want to pull out enough money, you know, so that my retirement plan is set, my financial future is set, but oh by the way, I eventually want my son to inherit the business. We've been working now for five years with a gentleman that's been trying to do the exact same thing. He has owned the business for 20 years, but he came to us five years ago saying, well, I want to give my business to my son. Well, that's great, but 98% of businesses that are given to the son or daughter fail. So if you're expecting this long payout from your son, this business has a very high potential to fail. And so now the business has failed, you no longer have any cash flow, and you're up the creek without the power. So it has taken, why has it taken five years to transition the business to the sun? Because we had to, over that period of time, spend less money, less time, energy, and investment focusing back into the business and pulling out more cash as we possibly could so that we could build his personal safety net. Okay. Had he started 20 years ago with that vision in mind, it would have been a whole lot easier. And instead of selling the business to his son or giving it to, at 72, he could have done it when he was 60 or 65. Okay? So it's how you're going to get there. You know, think about we're going from a personal standpoint, we're going to Miami. Think about your business simply as your transportation method. Okay? You know where you're going. Am I flying? Am I driving? You know, what style of business are you going to use from a very strategic standpoint? So, I know where I'm going personally. How much money do I need to do? That's step one. Two, strategically, I know what type of business I need to be. Now, three, tactically, how do I get there? And we really believe there's four crucial components to any successful business. Just four. Keep it simple. Number one, you've got to know your customer. Okay, and Joe's going to talk a lot about that today. Number two is you have to know what product that you serve up to a customer is the best. It's not necessarily great to have 15 different products if you only do five of them really well. Focus on the products that you are very, very good at. So for a long time, I was a CPA and tax preparer. I couldn't stand it. I didn't like it. But it generated revenue. It was not until a couple of years ago that I finally said, I can't do them anymore. I just can't stand them. I can't stand them because I'm not any good at it. Yeah, I lost revenue from not doing tax returns anymore. But guess what it did? It gave me back all this 
more time back to David's point so I could focus on the part of the business that I was passionate about. Okay, so focus on that product or that service that you are really, really good at. Number three, it always comes down to the people. Whether you're a service business, manufacturing technology, you know what I always say is, I always want someone in the organization who is better than I am. Valerie uh, works with us, she's certainly better than I am at what she does. Joe's been in the organization, he's certainly better. I always want to surround myself with people who are better. You know why I want to sit around myself with people who are better? Because it makes you better. It, well, it makes me better, it makes the organization better, but realistically it makes it a whole lot easier to allow them to do it. Okay, you know this, back to David's point, I've got to hold on to every single thing, right? i got to do it all. Well, if you're hiring people that you believe that are better than you, then it's really easy to say, hey, you're better at this, I'm going to let you do this. Hey, Joe, you're better at this than that. You know, Tiffany, she's better at technology. I want to give away all those things to those people that I feel like, but only because I feel like they they you know, can do it better than I can. Don't ever hire anybody, don't ever contract with anybody that you don't believe is as good as you are. Okay. Once you hire those people, let them go. You know, celebrate their successes. Tell them often how, how good they are. Every time I have a new client in the office, we bring Tiffany in and we talk to Tiffany and we say, Tiffany, why do you work here? And she says, because I'm smarter than you are. You know, that, that's true. And I, I say sometimes when she early on wouldn't say that, I say, well, the story is, is that for five years, Valerie kept coming up to me and going, David, I need somebody smart to talk to. I need somebody smart to. So it took me five years to learn the lesson, but I finally hired Tiffany. Always, always, whether they're a contractor, whether they're employees, or also, more importantly, make sure you build a strong team of advisors, okay? That could be your outsourced CFO, that could be your CPA, that could be your banker, that could be your coach. You know, bring these people in. There are, you can get a whole lot more bang for the buck by using outside advisors for an hour a week, an hour a month. Get that expertise that you need. You don't need a full-time person. If your business is less than $10 million, you don't need a full-time CFO, okay? If you're less than $25 million, you're probably just on the verge of needing. Get that quality expertise by the drink. You don't need it full-time. And number four is always, always, always have good information systems. I didn't say accounting systems, okay? I'm an accountant, you know, originally. I did not say accounting systems. Accounting systems only do your tax returns. Work, and Perk's going to talk to you a little bit more about this later as well. Work with someone who can turn your accounting system into an information system. Teach you, train you, work with you, design a system so that you get data. Okay? The only way that you can accelerate your business is to allow yourself the informational feedback loop. You see it weekly, you know, that weekly dashboard that's quick, it's five things. You look at your financial statements once, once a month with someone who can help you interpret it. You put together a, bone, uh, a business plan and a budget every year. You've got to have that feedback loop because if you don't, you're going to be sitting here in 2017 going, wow, here's all the mistakes I made in 2016. Get an information system that works, not an accounting system. Those four things are really going to be the keys. To hear more from this series, visit us at ircwealth.com slash abc.